Well, there were three or four strands that I was working with. One was this image of an older single woman who's made very unconventional choices, lives on her own, and belongs to a generation that is sort of in between the Nehruvian nation building generation and the MTV more blasé, much more self-confident generation. And that that was very clear to me that she would be her own person and have her own distinctive trajectory, but she would also belong to a larger generational narrative. I really wanted to address that. The second thing was the arts. And I'm not talking about a particular art world. This is not a novel about the Bangalore art world about which I know very little. But it is about art in general. It is about what do you feel when you enter a gallery and look at something hanging on the wall? What is the conversation you have with yourself? Uh, what do you feel when you see something that moves you so much you want to try and find a way to get closer to it? So that was the second thing. The third thing was Bangalore as a city and how it's changed. And how does it feel to somebody who's lived there long enough to feel betrayed by those changes? and feel a certain nostalgia for an older Bangalore without necessarily being a rooted native who has a kind of cantonment history and has lived in a grand bungalow and has that kind of sentimental semi-colonial nostalgia but just someone in an ordinary way who's an immigrant but still has that relationship to the city. The fourth thing I think was the small town in contrast to the big city and um, how does it work for an English-speaking, very westernized Indian to find her way through this other reality that you kind of idealize, but you also exaggerate in your mind. You exaggerate the fears, you exaggerate the horrors of that reality. Um, and would it help for you to actually experience it? Uh, and would it be interesting to the reader to actually be there firsthand through Kayanath? The first reason that I chose the art world is because I like art and I wanted to write a novel about people connected with art in different ways as lovers of art, people who just view art, people who are making art, people who collect art, uh, people who write about art, but also in the figure of Sati, who is Kainat's friend, the figure of the doubting Thomas, the one who feels that art is a waste of money it's self-indulgent. So you have this whole constellation of figures um, at the center of which is Kayanath who has a series of different relationships with art. She is in some ways like the ideal Rasika. She's the lover of art but she's also conflicted by a lot of things she sees. In her past was an aspiration to be an artist herself. So I just thought there's so much rich human comedy and human tragedy in the field of art. But having said that, it's not an insider view of art because I am not an artist, I've never made art and I've never written about it either. This was the first time. I certainly like her uh, and I think that that would have been difficult to stay with a character for so many years if I didn't like her at all, which is not to say that I agree with everything that she thinks or does uh, and neither is it to say that she is me except in the very broad sense in which Flaubert said I am Madame Bovary so in that sense I am Kainath but I think likability is overrated because as fiction readers increasingly you see comments on Goodreads or Amazon saying I didn't like this character I didn't agree with this point of view and why is that a precondition for liking a book? I, don't, I think we are treating fiction too much as something that we, we can like or dislike in a personal way. Whereas I think what's more important is curiosity and empathy. Uh, can you empathize with Kayanath? Are, are you curious about the life of a woman like her in a city like Bangalore? To me, that's more important because you may not like n number of characters in fiction, but they could still be characters in very, very moving, grand books. So I think it would be great if the reader likes her, but it would be even greater if they can empathize with her. Well, partly the comedy. 
what happens if you take a woman who has never really visited within quotes the real India and just put her out of her element and the people that she's surrounded by her friends there are some who know that India and some who don't like I say for instance about one of the characters this art collector called Sarah Mir that she could move between the big cities with the ease of a native but she would be horrified at anything 100 kilometers outside Bangalore and so I was just fascinated by the idea that our cities are like mirages, these giant mirages where these freaks live who, 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 who engage in these um, conversations and live these lives that are charmed lives but are also unreal lives. Uh, which is not to say that there's a higher hierarchy of reality and the small town is more real, but it's definitely very, very different. So the potential comedy and the sense of alienation to me was very interesting and I based Simal on a lot of small towns I've visited in that part of the country and elsewhere. The residents have a curious, almost forgetful relationship to the dance and it's really when the dance travels that it acquires a certain potency. When the dance maestro uh, or the or the impresario takes the dance out, takes it out of the little town or takes it abroad, that he gets a certain uh, position in that society, right? Uh, and then there's this king figure who also has a peculiarly possessive relationship to the dance, but it turns out it also has its regressive elements. So yeah, there were all these thoughts in my mind um, in putting Kayanat in Simhal and seeing if she would survive it. <laughs>